Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll be addressing the question, how should Catholics act during a crisis in the Church? Now, of course, as always, the first thing we need to do is ask, what exactly is a crisis in the Church? What are the definitions of the words in this question? When we speak of a crisis in the church, we don't mean that the church is running out of money, or its services aren't beautiful enough. We don't even mean that it's not making enough converts. These are problems, to be sure, but all of them can normally be solved by good Catholics working together in good faith. By crisis in the church, I mean a disregard of the faith by people who play roles within the church itself, especially when those people have teaching authority. They refuse to teach the truths of the faith, or in some extreme cases, they even commit grave moral offenses without having any intention of repenting and making amends for their crimes. This is a crisis because it encourages people to blame the church itself for this corruption, which is purely the fault of the individual people involved, and which have nothing to do with the actual teachings of the faith. However, what's even worse is how corruption of this sort can disrupt the ability of thousands of people to pass on the faith responsibly. This is worse because it prevents people from gaining the information they need on what they should do and believe in order to be saved. A crisis like this is definitely within the church itself, and not just a matter of how the church interacts with the world, and how well it does in doing so, though certainly any crisis in the church will also have effects even on people who don't belong to it. I'm sure by now that you know the kind of thing I'm talking about, so the question will be, what does a faithful Catholic actually do in this kind of situation, where authority figures in the church are actively betraying Jesus by refusing to teach or do what's right? This is the sort of situation that might discourage some people out of the faith. The first thing, therefore, that you should do is this. Embrace your faith much more fully. This can and should be done, at least in part, through prayer, and by learning as much as you can about the teachings of faith and morals that are still written down in authentic church documents like the Bible and the Catechism. Other books that contain reliable teachings of the church include the Code of Canon Law, if you've got a background in law, or the Summa Theologica, for people with a more philosophical bend. The writings of the saints, like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas, all of this great stuff can be found online right now at websites like New Advent, and it's so easy to get a hold of. Again, your faith will be vulnerable to people who want to tear it down unless you know what your faith is about. Not only that, but if you can recognize when someone is saying something that's contrary to the faith, you'll have a much easier time spotting those people who simply can't be trusted to teach you, your friends, or your children. If you don't know whether someone is honest or not, you won't know what to make of their words half the time, and you'll always be wrestling with doubt. If you know they're not honest, at least then you know how to deal with what they've said to you, that you can safely ignore a lot of it. Learn the faith so that you can spot dishonest and untrue claims about it right away, and if you hear something that sounds fishy, just look it up to see what the truth is. So, aside from knowing the faith and being able to recognize when somebody's giving you sham claims about it, what else can we do in a crisis? Well, one thing we can do is not worry how people look at us or what people think of us. We need to be able to make good decisions for the sake of our own spiritual well-being, and the well-being, in some cases, of the church. And that's much harder to do when you're worried about what Bob in the pew next to you will think if you don't toss some money into that collection basket. Speaking of collection baskets, while each of us has a moral obligation to provide for the needs of the church, we do not have a moral obligation to give whatever the leaders in the church ask for, or to give to every second collection charity that gets the nod from the local bishop to go around begging at Catholic parishes. The bishops and those serving under them are the people who give these alleged charities permission to collect funds from the churches, and in a crisis you can't always trust that those charities are acting in good faith. The very next charity that is collected for could be advancing causes that go against the teachings of the church unless you know what the charity is, what it does, and whether they're worth giving money to, you don't know what's going to happen. Don't give money to something if you don't know what it is, no matter how much of a cheapskate it makes you look like to fill us in row five. If you're going to a parish where you consistently hear things contrary to the true faith, or worse yet, 
a place where you think that you or someone you know are in danger, nothing should stop you from seeking out a better alternative at some other Catholic parish in or around the area. Now, these are just the steps to take in normal cases of crisis. If someone within the church has actually committed a crime against you, don't feel shy about contacting the proper authorities. Jesus has no intention of allowing evildoers to escape justice, and you shouldn't either. A crisis in the church can discourage some people from remaining Catholic. As I said earlier, some people may lose their faith and drift away. Don't follow them. Keep in mind, the Catholic Church was founded by Jesus Christ to be the path to heaven for souls. It is the only sure path to salvation, and no matter what foolish human beings may do within the church, it's important not to lose sight of that. Without the church, no one would be saved. Never be afraid to expose grave evil, and never be afraid to protect yourself and your family from evil people in the church, short of compromising your eternal salvation. But aren't there situations where we shouldn't expose someone's crimes? Well, next time. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.